this year, we might have to expect some studios closing. Hey guys and girls on Ask Japanese, it's Kathy Cat. This time, we are going to talk about the Japan state of emergency and one of the industries that has hit the hardest, that's very close to most of our hearts, and that is the anime industry. Now, there are five crises they are dealing with right now, and as a result, we might see some animes being cancelled, and in worst case scenario, some anime studios closing. So I'm going to explain to you guys five things that the anime industry is struggling with right now, and at the end of the video, I'm also going to tell you how you and I can help the anime industry at this point in time. So let's go! As you know, in Japan, people are told to avoid the three C's, which means closed spaces, crowded environments, and close contact with people. That is exactly what Japanese anime studios are. They are closed spaces, they are very crowded with people, one desk is right next to the next desk, and you will be in a very close contact with the people around you. These offices are very, very small as well, meaning a lot of people working in the same environment during day and night times. Anime studios generally tend to be very busy, especially when there's a deadline, so people might actually be like staying over and similar things like that. So those environments can't be used at this point in time. Now, if you watched the last video we've done on anime, on the anime industry, you know that some animators will actually be able to work out of the office at from home and similar. However, the assistant director will still have to go out to those animators and collect those papers, drive around and meet maybe even several animators a day. And then again, in case the assistant director picks it up, he might accidentally be passing it on to the animators. The vital part of Japanese anime is not only the animation, but also the voice actors and the voice acting studios. Again, a very small and kind of crowded. So some voice actors will, for example, have to speak together into the same microphone or be in the same. Now, some voice acting studios right now are trying to deal with that, meaning they are trying to separate the people in the booth and give them more space. So that's the first steps. But for some people, unfortunately, it's already too late. Some voice actors have already gotten the virus and once one person has it, the chances of the people that work with them having also the virus is quite high. Number two is finance. As you already know, the anime industry works generally on a very low budget scheme. Now, with that low budget, they kind of may do. However, right now, many TV broadcasters are cancelling the anime that are on right now, which means the anime studios will lose out on the money that they were counting on, and also the sponsors are jumping off. Remember, when you watch an anime, usually at the front or end, will, it will say, Goran no sponsor ni. And so it will always say like this anime has been featured by a certain sponsor and such and those kind of sponsors if they jump off there's no way to finance an anime at the same time so already something that already is based on low budget is losing that low budget that they had now a solution to this could be that maybe some tv stations will just re-show animes again that have aired before. This is something that we have, for example, a lot in Europe and similar. And in Japan, there is still a little bit of stock, but once they run out of that stock, they might have to reshow shows again. And hand-drawn anime needs a lot of staff and people working together at the same time and sometimes being in the same room. While 3D animation can mainly be done on computers and such, so maybe we're going to see a shift towards more 3D in the future, or at least over the next time. In a way, this might be a chance for the anime industry to change their way of production. <laughs> Number three, the Japanese animation studios have lost certain contacts to animation studios abroad. So, for example, many animes in Japan are actually helped by animators in China and in South Korea and other South Asian countries. The way this works is certain pages that will have already been drawn by Japanese animators get, get sent over to China or South Korea where people will cr produce the cell so they will copy the original artwork. However, right now there is no postal service between these countries, meaning people cannot send or receive the anime data that they need. Now, there is an alternative to it, which is 
drawing it, scanning it, sending it over, over there, creating it and sending it back. But that will result in a loss in quality in the future. So we're going to see how that's going to work from now on. But that's an important step within all those steps of making an anime. It's an important step to send those files back and forth or those originals as it used to be. And that right now is absolutely not possible. Another reason why this part of the anime process is made abroad is because it is a lot cheaper to do it abroad, but also because there's just not enough people here in Japan to sit down and draw the cells. You need a lot of people for a lot of pages, especially for the hand animated ones, and there are just not enough people here to do it. So that's why it's sent abroad. Again, money-wise and people-wise, it cannot be done to the same amount in Japan right now. To explain you the numbers, an average anime that you watch for 20 minutes takes from 4,000 to 10,000 pages that will have to be written by hand, by people. And there are not enough people in Japan to take care of this at this point in time. N -E -X -T. Number four is that many important tie-ups and collaborations are not gonna be possible. Now, the Japanese anime industry does not only live from the money from TV broadcasts and sponsors, but also for certain tie-ups. So it might be goods that they're selling or collaborations with a sweet company where like, you know, a character will be on top of the sweets or maybe appear in other games. There's quite a lot of other ways animes are trying to market themselves on the general market to get a little bit more cash into the industry because making an anime is so expensive. Now, many of those collaborations right now will not be possible. And for example, even for selling simple goods of like putting the character on sweets right now, that sweet combo in itself might not be selling as many sweets. So they might not be accepting any collaborations at this point in time. Also, Akihabara, the mecca of anime and manga culture right now, people are not really allowed to assemble there, which means people cannot physically go into the stores and buy items. Now, there are a couple of things available online, but if you've been to Akihabara before, you know there's a broad variety of things there and a lot of things in the anime industry work also from people going in and, you know, checking out items, reselling, buying little extra goods, finding something in store and... The, the way in Akihabara the shopping generally goes is you browse and you see new items and another thing and this is cool and you want that and all of that right now is not possible and Google recommendations doesn't always recommend you the exact item that you might need or want in the future to have. So the actual customers will have it harder to buy those items that are trying to get produced for people right now. Maybe figurines or similar things like at figurine cities. All of this is part of the extra merchandise production of the Japanese anime industry that will struggle as well due to this. And even in supermarkets and convenience stores, you are bound to find some items with an anime character on. All of this now because people are going out less and buying less, all of those extra items that are featuring Japanese anime on them might not sell as much, which means that money is not going to come back to the studios that are already financially struggling. If you think about it, the anime industry in Japan is a lot bigger than you might guess. It's not just watching it on TV, it's how many people are working on this to produce CDs, to produce art books, to produce extra mangas, extra merchandise, extra things that are coming out, food items and such. In Japan, if you go out on a day in Tokyo, you're bound to see so many things that are connected to the anime industry. And all of this shows how important this industry is in Japan. And we're all really worried how much it's going to struggle due to this. Number five, anime studios might struggle so much that this year we might have to expect some studios closing. Most of the anime production studios are in Tokyo and even those that are not in Tokyo are generally in crowded populated areas. So there is an area where lots of people can come to work there very quickly and easily. However, now this is backfiring because even in Tokyo right now, people are still outside. Even though the state of emergency has been called, there's no way to keep the people inside the houses. So the virus is still bound to spread. This will impact on the studios the, and the workers' productivity. Of course, many animators can work from home, but because the chain of work is now interrupted at so many places, they will need a lot more time or they might not have certain things to work with that they actually need. 
There seems to be the misconception that Japanese anime studios have a lot of money. They really, really don't. So if you compare them to big Japanese brands that you might know, like Toyota and Nintendo, they're, Toyota and Nintendo are like at the top of the pyramid. Japanese anime studios are right at the bottom, meaning they don't have much of a financial background. Generally, they can only produce an anime if sponsorships and stuff come in. So they can't produce the animes that we love from nothing. There's nothing there. And if nothing keeps coming in, those studios have no way of supporting their vitality. So worst case scenario, a couple of anime studios will just have to close and all their workers will be unemployed. And as you know from the first video that we did on the anime industry, many animators are also working freelance. They're not really secured by contracts, meaning in this current environment, they will be earning absolutely nothing. They have no back hold there at all, which also leads to quite a lot of people being unemployed right now because animes are not getting produced. <laughs> now that all sounds pretty bleak, but there are a couple of things we can do to support the anime industry at this point in time. And that's watch anime. If you're stuck inside the house anyway, watch anime. But don't just watch it on dodgy places and on YouTube. I mean, watch official anime meaning on official places. For example, Crunchyroll is a good page for that. Netflix. Like how many times a certain anime is spun or watched online, they get like a small amount of money and it's not that much. But the more people are watching and the more people are enjoying anime, the more money is going to go back to the studio. So that's a simple thing you could do wherever in the world you are very easily. And it's fun. <laughs> and number two is buy official merchandise from the anime alike, from official sellers, meaning don't buy it secondhand because that's not going to go anywhere near the anime manga industry again. But go to actually official stores, buy this kind of new, you can buy this online, buy maybe the DVD set of your very first anime or buy a drama CD of the anime you love the most. You know, there's quite a lot of things you can do to keep the anime industry running. At this point in time, there is an official big crowdfunding for the anime industry, but there might be in the future. So maybe keep your eyes open. Maybe there will be something official where people can put a little bit of cash together to support the struggling industry at this point in time. Now, I say don't watch anime on YouTube. I am making some exceptions here, though. Don't watch anime on YouTube that has been re-uploaded by some dodgy re-uploaders. But if on YouTube you find an official channel of a certain anime, go there, support them, write them messages, like it, share the videos. There's quite a lot of broadcasting companies that are now having also a YouTube channel and you can there support them, maybe send them even subtitle translations, similar things like that. And in Japan, over the next couple of weeks, we're also expecting official re-releases of shows being officially on YouTube for people to watch. And if you watch them, you know, those couple of seconds of a commercial that might be in the front or the end of the anime, watch that. That's all going towards those people who are trying to give you the content and who are trying to keep the anime industry running. You know, it's not a big thing. It's like two, two, three seconds or a minute or something of your time to watch a commercial. And then again, that money will also go towards the studios. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the director had a really cool idea as well. He said, if you check out your favorite anime, and it will usually say on Wikipedia and similar which anime studios it's coming from, feel free to maybe contact them and just send them a message of encouragement saying, hey, I love your stuff. You've really moved my life. So don't give up. I hope things are going to get better for you. Well, that's a really nice idea, director. I like that. Since our company also has an anime department, I have some friends who are animators and I'm doing my best to support them on a personal way, you know, giving them a call, seeing how they are. And it, it brings it a lot closer to me because I know people in the industry right now and I can see how it's struggling. I hope, I hope that we're not going to have to lose anime studios at this point in time. I want to do whatever I can do to support this industry that has moved my heart so much and in the way, set me on the path to come to Japan. On that note, those were five things that the anime industry right now is struggling with. I hope we can keep it alive and I hope we can keep it going. It's a tough time for many industries out there right now, but I know that the anime industry is close to many hearts and at the same time, it's also a thing that can bring us so much joy right now when we're locked inside and we can't go and see our friends. It's lovely to see those anime characters that have moved us, that have given us courage, that, you know, have 
changed our lives. So hopefully this industry is not going to suffer too much. And since we were talking about animes that have moved our hearts, let me know the anime that has moved your heart down below and let us know why you love it. Just let us know what anime, just keep the anime love going a little bit here in the comments. We have done a video on the truth and the dark side of the anime industry. Watching that video will help you understand a lot what we're talking about in this video, so be sure to check that one out. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. We're going to bring you up more in-depth detail here from Japan coming out to you guys, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the way out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you soon for more stuff here from Ask Japanese. From Tokyo, coming out to you.